recently I've made more of a concerted effort to memorize aspects of the seerah the facts and figures kind of thing that right. are hard to memorize by using like a, a what's the word anki which is like software timed repetition okay. because I thought as Muslims we should put more emphasis on that we should try and memorize as much of the little details as possible about the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but in terms of everything else it's good to just have a general grasp of it a little aside is how do you deal with just on a personal level right because you've done all this re- because you've done all this research into various aspects of islamic history the major conflicts um current conflicts how many times in a day do you have face palm moments where like you hear someone <laughs> where like you hear someone and obviously a lot of these conflicts involving different nationalities and stuff those people are going to be very passionate and then you hear someone saying something that you just know is not historically accurate and you want to how do you deal with that should i say something should i because uh, i'll let you get into it but like a, an example i have is if you've studied a little bit and you start learning about fiqh differences and like how it all comes from a different methodology of like uh, how a hadith was interpreted and it all makes sense essentially if you go into comparative fiqh but if you go from that position to someone who's never done that at all you're in that state of needless moon wars debates and like this stuff that's not a big deal but the average kind of person makes it into a big deal and it's i'm guessing you feel like that with a lot of aspects with islamic history yeah all the time there is there's a common thing to try to modernize we'll see to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there's a common every great figure especially in modern history many great figures every society try to try to grab on them every group every ideology tries to prove that, that person was really part of their group or really would have supported them an example would be malcolm x who was uh who a famous black muslim a civil rights activist but for, as far as we know he wasn't very knowledgeable in islam when he died but he did his best to what well, he had he was fairly devout from what we can see but i see so many groups trying to pull him into the ideology he would have never accepted that ideology it, same with martin luther king who was even though he was christian he was a devout christian people trying to prove that he would have been into all of these very liberal ideologies that he would probably never have been of since he was a very conservative christian and now we see the same thing with prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam where a lot of people generally muslims but they try to modernize him and turn him into this i don't know some sort of modern cafe a coffee cappuccino drinking hippie where who was all peace and love and everything and flowers and that's not who the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was from my, from my reading of it he led war he led wars he had battles he sometimes ordered the execution of his enemies and also people who broke certain rules he had to do these sort of things to establish a society and i don't have any problem with accepting that i don't have any problem with accepting the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, may have sent people to assassinate his enemies. I have no problem with saying that. Mm. He was a warrior. It was necessary at the time, mashallah. If I was alive and the prophet asked me to do it, I would hopefully vol- I hope I would have been able to volunteer to do it for him if mm-hmm. he asked me to do it. The point is that so recently I put a video out talking about the prophet's children and one of his I think his second son Ibrahim was born from a concubine, basically a female Maria. Son. Yeah, Maria Kub- Al-Kubtiya. who was a gift from the Egyptian king or the, you know not the Egyptian king the Egyptian patriarch Christian patriarch in the, in Egypt was it Mukakis or yeah something like that yeah, yeah. he wound up being beat by I don't know us later on but yeah he she was a gift basically and I know in our modern world we don't like the idea of concubine but during the prophet's time and up until very recently and as for historically speaking it wasn't really a big deal it wasn't considered a big deal and she was mm-hmm. his concubine she was she, he never married her she was a slave she never accepted a slam for us there are there are some disagreement with, about whether she accepted a slam be fair about that one but as far as i'm aware he never married her she's not considered part of his list of wives in all the seerah that i've seen and he had and i wrote that he had two concubines actually that we know of he also had a jewish woman who was also one of his concubines Serene. Yeah, I think Syria something like I can't remember her okay. name right now. But she wound up I believe she wound up accepting Islam later on. There's more concrete evidence that she accepted Islam than Maria did. And also the prophet tried to marry her but she refused. From other the prophet wanted to marry her and asked her to marry him, but she said no the situ- the, the current situation we have is fine. So she was happy just being a concubine, not having to accept the responsibility of being a wife. She's happy with just being a concubine. But the point of the matter is he had children with he had a child with Maria 
and I mentioned that she was his concubine. And in the notes or in the comments, someone said, the prophet didn't have any concubines. He married all of his wives. And it's very easy. Just go to sunnah.com, type in the word concubine. You get a bunch of hadith about the prophet with his the prophet with his concubines, other co companions with their concubines. It's not really that difficult to find out. So I just took this link and pasted it over there. I just said, please do some research. It's not that difficult to do these sort of things. Mm. And I don't think there's a reason... I don't think there's a need for us to try to modernize the prophet to fit with modern standards. We assume, I can go so far into this, but- I completely agree. And this is so it was our ideology that, that we have now didn't fit with back then. The things that we accept now as normal in society now would have been mind blowing to go back then. And they would have thought, they would think that we are crazy they see the things that we accept now as muslims and in society as general yeah and it's so sad to see how currently in on the muslim speaker circuit let's say mm -hmm. how it's th just this one version of islam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's portrayed and it gives it's giving a whole generation like a warped idea of yeah. the reality and it's like soon, like it might get to a stage where that's so common. Even now, sometimes it's like the reality is so much of a shock to people that they're not even willing to believe it. And it's like, which is why, Alhamdulillah, there is a relatively good kind of reactionary movement, let's say, in terms of Ustad Daniel Hey Hadju and how people like the unapologetic way he can defend certain things like slavery and Islam and like how he dismantles the philosophies Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim